Hey you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. Y'all know I like to get into my intro and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me and or are a part of the nursing studio family and crew, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I'm the founder and CEO of the nursing studio. I provide review courses, review books, review sessions, review videos, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. Now, I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. I started doing these practice question videos in hopes of helping you tie it all together because when doing a lot of my one-on-one sessions, I work with a lot of review students just because simply a lot of times it's not that you have a knowledge deficit is simply filling that gap of application. You know what I mean? So it may be one little gap, misunderstanding or terminology or whatever it is for you in particular that is helping, that is causing you to struggle, I should say, with closing the gap and passing boards. So um, that's why I like to work with people independently just to kind of gauge where you are and help you tie it all together. So I started doing this because sometimes, well, I shouldn't even say sometimes, but what I noticed is y'all are studying all the right things. You're doing all the right things. You're doing all these practice questions. You're reviewing the rationales. You're listening to all the tips and things that we tell you over and over again. And it's, it's just something that's not getting you to the finish line. So I wanted to provide a resource that y'all are able to work through with me, do it, uh, you know, on your own, pause the video, and then hear me explain it. And then put all the blocks together and hear me walk you through a variety of question styles. So you're reviewing it, you're retaining it, but you're practicing actively with someone um, doing questions, you know, and applying that material. So I hope y'all are finding this helpful. Uh, You know, I always like to get into the disclaimer uh, before we get started that Y'all know we know that there's no absolute in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient basis. Any of the questions y'all see here, I have created and designed based on what is currently being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP. You know, guidelines and different things change and they've updated exams. So I try to provide practice questions so you are knowing which guidelines and things to follow, okay? But if I am teaching on... Um, current things that we do in practice just to show you how to do it or things of that nature, I will always say that so there's no confusion, okay? So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today, you guys. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office with complaints of pressure-like pain to her face. She does mention that she has had some congestion recently. Based on this presentation, what is the best differential diagnosis by the nurse practitioner? Is it A, strep throat, B, tension headache, C, sinusitis, or D, migraine. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so you know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first. The stem being that in portion of the question, typically the one with the question mark, right? Because it allows you to slow down and ensure that you're answering what they are even asking you. And I know you're thinking, Brittany, we know this. Brittany, we know how to read through a question. But when you get on exam day and you're nervous and you're you're thinking through all of the stuff that you know, we will skim through a question, see certain things that look like one plus one equals two, and we start to create our own storyline. And that's not even what the question is asking. So I say, read that stem before you get into that fluffy scenario so you know what you are looking to answer anyway. So for example, here, the stem of this question states, based on this presentation, What is the best differential diagnosis by the nurse practitioner? So here, you know, you need to run it back and look at the assessment findings. What are those subjective complaints that the patient is making? What are the objective findings that the nurse practitioner has seen, evaluated, examined, and have provided here in the scenario, right? Because we're looking for the best differential. So here, the patient comes in complaining of this pressure-like pain to her face, The nurse practitioner um, notes that she does mention that she had some congestion recently. So, you know, y'all, that pressure-like pain on the face is classic for sinusitis. Those sinuses being clogged, inflamed, tender to touch, um, pressure-like feeling on their face. 
So C is your best answer, okay? Sinusitis. Question number two. The nurse practitioner has diagnosed the patient with sinusitis. What is the best treatment option? Is it A, amoxicillin, B, Bactrim, C, levofloxacin, or D, azithromycin? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. So stem of the question, what is the best treatment? All right, and y'all know I always stress, if they're asking you for treatment, you need to run it back and see what the diagnosis is. See if they have provided you with the diagnosis. If not, then you know what you do. You step it back a bit further, look at the assessment findings, the subjective, the objective, to determine what your diagnosis is. Because we got to know a diagnosis to be able to treat, right? Or know something to treat. So here, they already gave us the diagnosis. The patient has been diagnosed with sinusitis. So what is the best treatment option? So out of these selections here, A, amoxicillin is that best treatment option because if sinusitis is warranting antibiotic management, the amoxicillin is that first line therapy. You can also use Augmentin, but amoxicillin is your first line, okay? And the first out of these answer choices. Question number three, the nurse practitioner has diagnosed the patient with sinusitis. The patient mentions an allergy to penicillin. What is the best treatment um, option for this patient? Is it A, azithromycin, B, augmentin, C, doxycycline, or D, Bactrim? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so the STEM here states, what is the best treatment option? So again, we got to run it back and see what the diagnosis is, right? So this patient here also has sinusitis, but the patient mentions an allergy to penicillin. So we just spoke of in the last question that amoxicillin is one of those first-line therapy options, but this patient is allergic to penicillin, right? So we know we're not going to give amoxicillin. Um, we also mentioned that you can also give augmentin, but we can eliminate augmentin as well because what is augmentin made of? amoxicillin and clavulonic acid, right? So the penicillin allergy, we still don't want to give that. So now we're down to azithromycin, doxy, and Bactrim. Well, Bactrim is not even one of the options that we utilize to treat with. Doxycycline C is your best answer. So if your patient with sinusitis has a penicillin allergy, you can go with doxycycline or you can go with a respiratory fluoroquinolone remembering and they're not going to if it's if it's things like this where you can do one or the other they're not going to give you both in the scenario unless it's something in there to exclude one or the other right so um and what do i mean by that so if they were saying this and said they had an allergy to penicillin and we know that our options are doxy and um a respiratory fluoroquinolone if it said they were allergic to penicillin and a tetracycline then they could put both of those answer choices of doxy and a respiratory fluoroquinolone because you know you need to eliminate doxy also, right? But in the event that they're just strictly saying an allergy to penicillin, then know that you can either go doxy or respiratory fluoroquinolone. Now, those of you who uh, do my uh, practice questions or any of my review or have my review books or any of the things, any of my courses, y'all know I call my mnemonics Britney's Brilliance. And you know... The way I tell y'all to remember your respiratory fluoroquinolones, okay? And those of you who are new here, come on and get with it so you can have this down too. So I say, and you'll learn that I say silly stuff uh, because that's how I retain and I hope that it helps you too. But respiratory, because we're working on the lungs, I say get my lungs. We're trying to get my lungs together, right? So a respiratory fluoroquinolone, G for get, G for gemofloxacin, M for my, M for moxifloxacin, L for lungs, L for levofloxacin, right? Those are the three respiratory fluoroquinolones. So if they saw, if you saw any of those, you, you can use the respiratory fluoroquinolones or doxy in the event of a patient being allergic to penicillin, okay? All right, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you meet me back here, you guys. And um, if you need any of the resources that I offer, if you're looking for a review book, my ebook as well as the paperback option are both linked in the bio at this channel at the top of the channel the self-paced review course that you can watch videos on each system designed for family and adult gero for the ancc as well as aamp exam is also linked in the bio of this channel 
Our, um, my group review course that I do periodically throughout the year is my five-week review, my five-week intensive review. But we are currently in week two of one of those. So just be on the lookout of the next up and coming one or my one-on-one -on -one sessions. One-on-one -on -one sessions are designed um, in three different ways. Say you have a weakness that you want to cover, just like, hey, um, Brittany, I'm struggling with getting hypertension and all the medications down. I just want to book a, a 30 minute or an hour or whatever with you. That's one way you can do sessions. Okay. Number two, if you are getting prepared, you're getting closer, you're a couple of weeks out. Uh, some people do it all the way down to the week days, you know, um, out and you want to just assess your exam readiness. Where are you? You know, things you need to pay attention to or things of that nature. That's another option for my one-on-one -on -one session. Or lastly is the custom option. Saying that you just need a little bit more time, need me to work alongside you. You know, it's a customized plan based off of where you are, what you need. A lot of those custom packages are, um, are utilized with people who have been unsuccessful before and you're just really trying to figure out, hey, Brittany, what am I doing wrong? I help you to identify that weakness. We work together. I create a study schedule based off of the timeline that you have that you want to a lot to studying before retesting. And we work together throughout that period of time to take you from unsuccessful to successful. So if you need any of those resources, feel free to call us at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to that number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. But y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye y'all.